Included with your videotape is a course index. This contains reference numbers which will allow you to quickly access sections and topics with ease. In order to use this, you should reset the counter on your VCR to zero now. The Teach Yourself series from Via Graphics, designed to teach you to use your computer the fast and easy way. I'm David Cooper, along with Julie Clements. Access is an electronic database that provides us with a set of powerful tools for collecting, retrieving, and presenting data. One of the primary reasons for the success of Access is that it duplicates most of the capabilities of client-server relational databases. Despite Access's power, it's easy for non-programmers to use. Place the learning disk in the proper drive. Ours is A. Click on the Start button and select Run from the menu. In the command line, enter a colon backslash via learn dot exe and choose OK. Then choose the Install button and click OK to accept the default directory. A window appears showing the installation progress and we choose OK at the successfully copied prompt. The Via Graphics Learning folder appears on the C drive and we are returned to the Windows 95 desktop. Now let's begin by launching Microsoft Access. To start Access, we click on the Start button in the lower left. Select Programs from the Start menu, then choose Microsoft Access. As Access is loading, a copyright notice called a splash screen appears with the name and organization that was entered at the time the Access was installed. After Access has loaded, we see the database opening dialog box. A list of previous open databases is at the bottom of this dialog box. However, if this is the first time we've ever run Access, the list is empty except for the More Files choice. We can open a database at the time we start Access, or we can open a database anytime after we've started Access. We'll choose the Open an Existing Database option to activate the list of existing files. Access provides us with a sample database called Northwind. We'll double-click the Northwind database. Click on OK. When there is no open database, Access displays an empty window. This window serves as a background for all Access operations. As with all windows, there is a control menu in the upper left corner. A title bar at the top of the window tells us that we are working in Microsoft Access. The title bar above the database window tells us the name of the active database. Some elements of the Access window are slightly different from other Microsoft Office applications. The menu commands in the menu bar and the built-in toolbars change as we move between different windows in Access. The active window determines which commands are available. As we move the mouse over buttons on the toolbar, a label called a screen tip displays the name of each button. The status bar displays status messages on the left and specific modes along with locking keys on the right. A database is an organized collection of related information or a data stored for easy, efficient use. A telephone directory or a check register are examples of databases. If our database isn't stored on a computer, we may be tracking information from a variety of sources that we're having to coordinate and organize ourselves. With Microsoft Access, we can manage all of our information from a single database file. An access database file is an accumulation of all the objects that make up the collection of information. 
Within a database file, we divide our data into separate storage containers called tables. We create one table for each type of information we track. To bring the data from multiple tables together, we define relationships between the tables. To easily view, enter, and change data directly in a table, we create a form. When we open a form, Access retrieves the data from one or more tables and displays it on screen using a layout we select. To required find and retrieve just the data that meets conditions we specify, including data from multiple tables, we create a query. A query can also update or delete multiple records at the same time and perform built-in or custom calculations on our data. To analyze our data or present it in a certain way in print, we create a report. For example, we might print one report that groups data and calculates totals, and another report with different data formatted for printing mailing labels. We use macros to automate common tasks. A macro is a set of one or more actions that each perform a particular operation, such as opening a form or printing a report. We can also use modules to automate our database. A module is a collection of visual basic for application declarations and procedures that are stored together as a unit. The table is open in the datasheet view. A horizontal row in a datasheet table contains information about an individual person, place, or thing. One row is called a record. A vertical column in a datasheet table contains one specific item of information about the records. A column is called a field. The titles at the top of each column are called field selectors. We'll use the horizontal scroll bar in the lower part of the screen to view the fields to the right of our table. Let's close the table by clicking the close button in the upper right. Let's open the customer's table by double-clicking on it. In the table's datasheet view, we can add to it, edit, or view the data in a table. We can also check the spelling and print the table's data. We can filter or sort records, change the datasheet's appearance, or change the table structure by adding or deleting columns. We'll close the table and return to the database. Let's select the Forms object at the top of the database window. Double-click the Employees form to open it. Forms are another way to work with data in a table. Let's press the Page Down button on the keyboard to scroll through these records. They display information from tables or queries for viewing, editing, or data entry. Most of this information comes from an underlying record source. Other information in the form is stored in the form's design. We create the link between a form and its record source by using graphical objects called controls. The most common type of control used to display and enter data is a text box. Let's close the form with the close button. Select the Queries object. We use queries to view, change, and analyze data in different ways. Double-click the Invoices query. We can also use queries as a source of records for forms and reports. The most common type is a Select query, which retrieves data from one or more tables using criteria we specify, and then displays it in the order we want. We create a query by specifying the data we want to work with. When we run the query, Access returns a table containing only the records that meet our criteria. Close the query. Select the Reports object. A report is an effective way to present our data in a printed format. Because we have control over the size and appearance of everything on the report, we can display the information the way we want to see it. Double-click the invoice report. We'll use the arrow key on the keyboard to move around the report. Most of the information in a report comes from an underlying table, 
query or SQL statement, which is the source of the report's data. Other information in the report is stored in the report's design. We create the link between a report and its record source by using graphical objects called controls. Controls can be text boxes that display names and numbers, labels that display titles, and decorative lines that graphically organize the data and make the report more attractive. We'll close the report. Then we'll close the database. You may pause the tape now to practice on your computer. In this chapter, we discuss the access window and the fundamental objects that make up the database. Microsoft Access provides two methods for creating a database. We can create a blank database and then add tables, forms, reports, and other objects later. This is the most flexible method, but it requires us to define each database element separately. We can also use a database wizard to create in one operation the required tables, forms, and reports for the type of database we choose. This is the easiest way to start creating our database. Either way, we can modify and extend our database at any time after it has been created. Let's create our first database with the help of Database Wizard. We'll click the new database button on the toolbar. It looks like a blank sheet of paper. Select the Databases tab. The Database Wizard provides 22 templates for creating the most common types of user databases for applications such as customer contact management, maintaining a list of recipes, and organizing a collection of audio CDs or videotapes. We double-click a template to start the Database Wizard. Let's double-click the Address Book icon. We then specify a name and location for the database. Let's name it My Address File and place it in the Via Graphics Learn folder. Click the Create button to start defining the new database. The database wizard provides us with a series of dialog boxes that step us through the creation of the database. The first dialog box confirms the type of database we selected. We'll click the Next button to continue to the next box. This box tells us that our database requires certain information. Notice the required field names are selected in the list. We can also add additional items to our database by selecting them. We'll choose the Children Names option. Let's also scroll down the list and select Date Last Talked and Date Updated. Click the Next button. As we highlight different styles, the preview window changes to show us that style. We'll accept clouds for our screen style and click the Next button. Let's select Corporate for our printed report style and click Next. We'll title the database My Address File and click Next. When we get to the last database wizard dialog box, we click the Finish button. The wizard then creates the object for the new database. The database wizard creates tables, queries, forms and reports. The database wizard also makes an add-in to create a standard switchboard form to open forms or reports, customize the switchboard, or edit the database. We'll click the Enter View Address button in the main switchboard window. Let's enter our first record. In the first name field, type Bill and press either the Enter key or the Tab key to move to the last name field. 
Type Smith and press tab. Type 1242 North Willow Avenue and press tab. Type Prior in the city field and press the tab key. Type OK in the state box and press tab. The postal code is 74361. The country is USA. His children's names are Linda, Michael, and Chris. And Rita is his spouse's name. We'll type 918-825-6842 in the home phone field and press enter. For the work phone, we'll type 918-825-6700 and press tab. Press tab again to skip the work extension field and type 918-825-6744 in the fax number field. Type 122296 for both the date last talked and the date updated. Let's close the window and the main switchboard. We'll also close the database. It's minimized in the lower left. Now let's create a new database without the assistance of the database wizard. Choose the new database button in the toolbar. Blank database is selected in the new dialog box, so we'll click OK. We'll name our database Moonstone Inc. and place it in the Via Graphics Learn folder. Click the Create button. We'll begin by building a table for our information. A table is a collection of records about a particular category of information. Fields are the building blocks of tables. Each field contains information about one aspect of the category. The table wizard assists us in creating a table by offering over 40 sample tables for personal and business use. Each sample table has a set of appropriate fields we can choose from. Make sure the tables tab is selected. Then click the new button. Double click table wizard. We'll select products from the list on sample business tables. Notice the sample field changed to a set of fields appropriate for our table. We select the sample fields we want by clicking the greater than button. This sends our field into the fields in my new table box. The double greater than button sends all of the fields. The less than symbol sends fields back to the sample fields box. The double less than button sends all of the selected fields back and allows us to start over. Let's send over all the fields by clicking the double greater than button. Click next. Let's name the table inventory and click the next button. In the next dialog box, we'll accept the defaults and click the finish button. The wizard then builds the table. Let's maximize the window and scroll to the right to view our new table. Now let's close the table. To create another table, we'll click on the new button. Now let's double click the table wizard. Choose customers from the sample tables list. Let's send over the following fields, customer ID, company name, and contact first name. Let's rename this field by clicking the rename button below the list. Type contact name and click OK. We'll also send billing address, city, state or province, postal code, phone number, fax number, email address, and notes into the fields in my database list. Click Next. 
Let's name the table customer list and click the Next button. We'll accept the default of No Relationship and click the Next button. In the next dialog box, we'll accept the defaults and click the Finish button. The wizard then builds the table. Let's scroll to the right to view our new table. Now let's close the table. If the table wizard doesn't offer the type of table or fields we need, we can create a table ourselves. We can also change a table if the table wizard doesn't create the exact table we want. Let's open a new database from the toolbar. Remember, opening a different database closes the current one. Click OK or press Enter to accept the blank database. Let's type Via Graphics in the file name box. Place it in the Via Graphics Learn folder. And click Create. To create a table without a wizard, we click the Table Object tab if necessary and choose the New button. In the New Table dialog box, double-click the Design View option. To define the fields in a tab, we type the name of the first field in the field name column. The maximum width of a field name is 64 characters, including spaces. Each field name must be unique. We can use letters, numbers, and blank spaces. We cannot use a period, exclamation mark, back quote character, or square brackets. A field name also can't contain leading spaces. Let's name our first field ID code. In the Data Type column, we'll click the arrow to select a data type. The text data type is used for both text and numbers. A memo data type is used for lengthy text and numbers. The number data type is used for numerical data on which we intend to perform mathematical calculations. Date time data type is used for dates and times. Currency data type is used for currency values. It in the format we select from the wizard. Let's choose text for the ID code's data type. In the description column, we'll type a description of the information this field will contain. Descriptions are optional. Let's type an ID code is a numerical entry. Press the tab key on the keyboard to move to the field name column. We'll type title for our second field name. And again, press the tab key. Choose text in the data type column. And type enter the title of the product as the description. Pressing tab after each entry. We'll type quantity as our third field name and select number as its data type. For the description, we'll type enter the number of titles ordered. Our fourth field will be named price. Choose currency in the data type column. Type the description enter the regular selling price. Type purchase date as the next field name. Select date time for the data type. The description will be type the date of purchase. Our next field name will be new customer. We'll set the data type to yes, no and make the description answer either yes or no.
Access recommends that we designate a primary key field in every table. If we don't designate one, Access asks us if we want it to create one when we save the table. The primary key is a field or combination of fields that uniquely identifies each record in a table. Primary keys help Access manage data more efficiently. It maintains a sort order of records based on the field that makes up the primary key. It also speeds up sorting and searching operations. If a table doesn't include an obvious primary key, we can have Access create a field that assigns a unique number to each record. To define the primary key for the current table, we select the field that we want to define as the primary key by clicking the field selector button to the left of the field name. If we want to define multiple fields as the primary key, we hold down the control key as we click the field selector of each additional field that we want to define as the primary key. We'll select ID code. A table can have only one primary key. This key can be made up of one or more fields. If we identify more than one field as key fields, these fields, taken as a group, must be unique for each record. If we select multiple fields with the row selectors, the fields are ordered according to their order in the table. Click the primary key button in the toolbar. It looks like a small brass key. Sorting is the most obvious benefit of a primary key. Access will now sort the table based on this field. After we've finished defining the fields, choose Save from the File menu to save the table's design. We'll name the table Orders and press Enter. Let's look at our new table. Choose the Datasheet View button in the toolbar. It looks like a small spreadsheet. We may want to add or delete some fields, or we may need to change the number of characters in a field. Changing the design of a table is simply a matter of returning to the design view of our table. Let's select the design view button on the toolbar. It looks like a triangle and a pencil. Let's add the field country by scrolling to the bottom of the field name list. Choose the text data type. and type the description, enter the customer's country. Each field has a set of properties we use to specify how we want the data stored, handled, and displayed. We set the properties in the bottom part of the table window's design view. The properties we can set for each field are determined by the data we type selected for the field. To set a field property in the table's design view, select the field whose properties we want to set. We'll choose quantity. We click the property we want to set in the bottom part of the window. We can change the data type of a field at any time. However, there may be unexpected results if the field contains data. If Access can't convert a particular value to the new data type, it deletes the value. If we convert a field's data type to a data type with smaller field size, Access will truncate any data longer than the allowable field size. It is also important to remember that in large tables, changing the data type may take a long time. Field size determines the maximum length of the text field or type of number. Format determines how data is displayed. We can use predefined formats or customize our own. Input mask formats the characters for data entry. It also has predefined masks, or we can customize our own input mask. Decimal places sets the number of places to the right of the decimal. Caption is the default field label in a form or report. For example, the field name paid could have had the caption paid yet, Default value is a value entered in a field when records are created. Validation rule is an expression that defines the data entry rules. Validation text is the text that appears when invalid data is entered in the field. 
Required means data must be entered. Allow zero length defines whether zero length strings are permitted. Indexed fields are used to define single field indexes to speed searches. We set an index if this field will be used to look up information in the table or if we will use it to alphabetize records in a table. Now let's build a table. Choose the new button. In the new table dialog box, double click the design view option. Type ID for our first field name. We'll make it an auto number field and set it as the primary key. Our second field will be first name. Set its data type to text. Change the input mask to greater than, question mark, less than, followed by 14 question marks. A question mark represents one character. We have to enter at least as many question marks as there are characters in the longest name. This will capitalize the first letter of the name. Our third field will be last name. It's also a text field and we'll build the same input mask that we created for the first name. Our fourth field will be address. Let's make it a text field. Type phone as the next field and choose text as the data type. Save the table with the save button. Name it customers. We'll use the input mask wizards to create the phone format. Click Finish. Our last field will be Named Notes. We'll make it a memo field. Close the table. Answer Yes to save the design. You may pause the tape now. In this chapter, we learn to create a database both with and without the help of a wizard. We also learn to create a table with and without a wizard. Finally, we designed a table and changed its field properties. Access always displays a blank record at the bottom of the data sheet with an asterisk indicator to its left. We can type a new record at any time. Access saves changes to a record when we move to the next record. Choose Save Record from the File menu or close the data sheet or form. Double click the Orders table to open it. We'll begin adding records in the data sheet view. We press the Tab key on the keyboard to move from field to field. Type 1 in the ID code field. Type Deluxe Training for Office 97, 30 videos, and press Tab. Type 1 for the quantity and press Tab. Type 995 in the price field and press enter. Type 121096 as the purchase date and press tab. Press the spacebar to place a check in the new field. 
Press tab. Type U.S. for the country. After typing in the last field of the record, we press tab again to move to another blank record, or we can add data to the table by choosing the new record button in the toolbar. We'll type 2 for the ID code. Then learning access 95 introduction and press tab. Hold down the control key and type an apostrophe in the quantity field and press tab. Enter $49.95 as the price and press tab. Hold down the control key and press the semicolon in the purchase date field. Press tab. Press the space bar to mark the new checkbox and press the tab key to move to the last field. Type France in the country field and press tab. The dialog box reminds us that we have inserted some invalid text. We'll click OK and type Europe. Press tab to add a new record. Close the table. To create a quick form, we click the Forms tab of the database window. Click the New button. In the New Form dialog box, we click the wizard that we want to use. Notice a description of the wizard appears in the left side of the dialog box. Let's choose Form Wizard. We'll click the arrow on the drop-down list at the bottom of the New Form dialog box. Choose Orders and click OK. We'll click the double greater than button to place all of the fields on the form. Click the next button. Remember, if we change our mind, we can click the back button to return to a previous step in Form Wizard. Let's accept Colomar as the layout for the form and click the next button. We'll select Standard for our style and click Next. Let's verify that Orders is the name of the form. Access displays the form title we enter here as the name in the form window's title bar. However, it isn't part of the actual form. Click the Finish button. Click the New Record button in the toolbar. It looks like a red triangle pointing at an asterisk. Let's maximize the window with the Maximize button in the upper right. Type 3 for the ID code field and press Enter. Hold down the control key and type a single quote to repeat the last title. Remember to press Tab after each entry. Type 2 for the quantity and hold down the control key and type an apostrophe for the price. We'll enter 4697 for the purchase date. Let's tab to skip over the new field and type U.S. for the country. Data entered into this form automatically updates the table it's attached to. Let's make sure the record we entered in Form View appears in the table. To switch between Form View and Datasheet View, we click the drop-down arrow in the Form View icon. It's the first button on the left. Choose Datasheet View. Then press Control plus Home. Notice Record 3 is included in the table. We can also change views with the View menu. Choose Form View from the View menu. To close the form, we'll click the Close button in the upper right corner of the Orders form. The form is now available to us whenever we want to use it. Close the Via Graphics database. We can copy or move the data in a field or in one or more records to a new location. We can also copy a table in the database window and paste its records into a new table or append it to an existing table. 
To copy a table and paste or append its recorded data, we'll begin by opening the database we'll be copying from. Click the Open button on the toolbar and double-click the VIA file database in the VIA Graphics Learn folder. To copy the records in the orders table of the VIA file database into the orders table of the VIA graphics database, we click once on orders if necessary to select it. Remember, we don't want to open the table, so don't double click it. Choose the copy button on the toolbar. It looks like two sheets of paper. Select the open button on the toolbar and double click the VIA graphics database. Click the Paste button on the toolbar. It looks like a clipboard and a sheet of paper. Type orders and choose the Append Data to Existing Table options. Click OK. Double-click the Orders table to open it and verify the additional records. Close the table. We can also copy the structure of a table without copying the actual records. To build an employee's table using the same structure as the customer's table, we click on the customer table to select it. Choose the copy button on the toolbar. Choose the paste button on the toolbar. Type employees. Choose structure only and click OK. Let's open the employees table to verify that the structure was copied. Close the table. You may pause the tape now. In this chapter, we created a form and we entered data into a table in both the data sheet and the form view. We also copied records from one table into an existing table. Finally, we created a new table based on the structure of an existing table. After our tables are created and the records have been entered, we'll need to maintain them. Let's begin by learning to navigate a table. Open the orders table. In the data sheet view, we can see multiple records and as many fields as will fit across the screen. Maximize the screen if necessary. Pressing the down arrow key on the keyboard moves us in the current field to the next record. Pressing the up arrow key moves us in the current field to the previous record. Pressing the tab key or the right arrow key moves us to the right one field. Holding down the shift key while pressing the tab key moves us to the left one field. Pressing the left arrow key will also move us left one field. Holding down the control key and pressing the up arrow moves us to the current field in the first record. Holding down the control key and pressing the down arrow moves us to the current field in the last record. The home key moves us to the first field in the current record. The end key moves us to the last field in the current record. Holding down the control key and pressing home takes us to the first field in the first record. Control plus end takes us to the last field in the last record. The page down key displays the next screen of records. The page up key displays the records in the previous window. With the F5 key, we can go to a particular record. We press F5, type record number 6, and press Enter. Access lets us move and resize columns, change the order of the columns, the row height, the font, and freeze our columns in the datasheet view. If we customize the datasheet view and we want to keep the customized setting for future sessions, we simply save the changes when we close the table. To resize a column, we move the mouse pointer to the right side of the field selector at the top of the column we want to change. 
we'll aim to the right of the ID code field. Notice the mouse pointer changed to a two-headed arrow split by a vertical bar. Hold down the mouse button and drag the column to the left until all of the information in the column is displayed in the width we like. Then release the mouse button. We can also quickly size a datasheet column to fit its data by double-clicking the right edge of the column selector. Let's double-click to the right of title. To size multiple columns, we drag the mouse pointer through the field selectors or we click the field selector of the first column and shift and click the field selector of the last column we want to select. Scroll the window to the right if necessary. We'll select quantity, price, and purchase date. Drag the price column to the right and release the mouse button. Notice all three columns are now the same width. To change the row height, move the mouse pointer to the line separating any two record selector buttons. The mouse pointer changes to a vertical two-headed arrow split by a horizontal bar. Hold down the mouse button, drag the icon down to increase the size of the rows. Notice that changing the height of one row changes the height of all of the rows in the data sheet. To move a column in the data sheet, we select the column we want to move by clicking its field selector. We'll select price. Click and hold down the mouse button in the field select again. Notice access displays a vertical bar along the left side of the column. Let's drag the column to the left of the title field. Hold down the control key and press the home key to move to the beginning of the data sheet. It's important to remember that changing the column order doesn't affect the defined order of the fields in the table. To change the order of the fields in the underlying table and not the data sheet, we must make our changes in the table windows design view. If we want to search a particular field, we move to that field. Let's move to the purchase date field. Click the Find button on the toolbar. It looks like binoculars. We type what we want to search for in the Find What box. Let's type 121096 and click on the Find First button. If a matching record is found, the record is highlighted so that we can edit it. We close the Find box and view the matched record. If this isn't the record we're looking for, we continue the search by choosing the Find Next button. The search feature specifies whether the search proceeds from the current record up to the beginning of the records, or down to the end of the records. The default is All, which searches the entire data sheet. We'll accept the default setting. The drop-down list next to the Match option in the Find in Field dialog box lets us determine what portion of the field we want to search. Any part of the field searches from any occurrence of the text string. For example, searching for milk finds milk, skim milk, and 2% milk. Match whole field recognizes a match only when the text string matches the complete contents of the field. For example, searching for woods finds woods, but not Woodson. Start of field searches for the text string at the beginning of the field. For example, searching for Shelby finds Shelby Smith, but not Sharon Shelby. If we want access to search for the text string exactly as we typed it in the Find What section, we mark Match Case. The search fields as formatted option allows us to find data based on its display format. Search only current field specifies whether the search is confined to the current field in each record or includes all fields in each record. The current field search is faster. We click Find Next to continue the search. Click the Close button to leave the dialog box. Hold down the control key plus the home key to return to the first field in the data sheet. Press Control F. Type Access in the Find What box. 
We'll choose all and any part of field, and we'll search all fields by clicking off the Search Only Current Field option. Click Find First. Click the Find Next button until Access tells us we've finished the search. Click OK and close the dialog box. Click Close to close the Find box. Press Control F to open the Find dialog box. Type 49 dot number sign number sign, then click Find First. After viewing the results of our find, we'll close the dialog box. Then close the table. Answer No to not save our changes. We can also filter our table in both the data sheet and the form view. Let's switch back to the data sheet view by clicking the data sheet button in the toolbar. To use the filter by selection option, we select a value in our table for access to use as the filter. We'll choose as marked new field. Click the filter by selection button to display only the records meeting the filter criteria. It looks like a funnel with a lightning bolt. Clear the filter by clicking off the Apply Filter tool. We can also use the Filter by Form button in the toolbar. It looks like a funnel with a form. Access displays a single row into which we type a filter criterion. We'll choose 121096 in the drop-down list of the Purchase Date field. If we click on the OR tab at the bottom of the form, we can enter an additional filter criterion. When we click the Apply Filter button, only the records that match our filter appear in the data sheet. The Apply Filter button looks like a funnel. Click it again to clear the filter. Editing records is basically a matter of moving to the data we want to change and typing the changes. When we begin editing a record, the record indicator shows a pencil icon to indicate that the record is being edited. When we are entering the data into our table, we accidentally type some incorrect information that we want to correct now. Press the F5 key to access Go To. Type 12 and press Enter. Press the right arrow button on the keyboard to move to the price field. Pressing the F2 key toggles us between insertion point mode, which we use for editing, and field selection mode, which we use for navigation. Press F2. Notice the arrow keys now move us through the field entry one character at a time. Arrow to the 5 and change the price to $489.95. Press F2 to return to the navigation mode. Press the F5 key and type 14. Press Enter. Press the Shift and Tab key to move to the title field in record 14. Hold down the Shift key and press F2 to zoom this field. Change the version number to 4.0 and click OK. To delete a record, we select the record we want to delete by clicking on the record selector at the left of the record. Let's use the button in the lower left corner of the datasheet window. The button that looks like a triangle pointing left at a line always moves us to the first record. The next button with only the left pointing triangle moves us to the previous record. The triangle pointing right moves us to the next record, and the triangle pointing right at a line always takes us to the last record. We'll click the previous button until the record number box reads 24. Click the delete record icon in the toolbar. It looks like a triangle pointing at an X. Choose yes to delete the record. Close the order form. Select the table's object. Double-click the orders table. Let's switch to the design view with the design view button in the toolbar. It looks like a triangle and a pencil. We use the indexed property to find and sort records using a single table field. We can create as many indexes as we need. The indexes are created when we save the table design and are automatically updated when we change or add records. We can add or delete indexes at any time. 
However, it is important to remember that MEMO and OLAY fields can't be indexed. If an index exists on a field we are sorting, the sorting process is much quicker. Access automatically uses indexes if the indexes exist. To add an index to the purchase date field, we first select it. In the lower part of the screen, we click in the indexed property field and open the drop-down list. Since we can have duplicates in this field, we'll choose yes. Duplicates OK. Remember, just defining an index doesn't resort the record in the table. Instead, Access uses the index to speed the sorting of the table when we request a sort. To sort the table, we return to the datasheet view. Save the changes. Resize the purchase date field. Then scroll the datasheet to the right. Click the purchase date field. Then the sort ascending icon on the toolbar. It looks like the letter A sitting on the letter Z with a down pointing arrow to the right of the letters. Notice the records are now sorted in ascending order by the purchase date. But what if we need a complex sort that sorts by more than one field? To create a composite index, we'll return to Design View. Click the Indexes button on the toolbar. It is lines beside a lightning bolt. Click an empty cell in the Index Name box and type Title Date. Click the drop-down arrow in the Field Name box and choose Title. Click in the next row down under Field Name and choose Purchase Date. This index means that from this point on, when we sort by the title field, Access will immediately sort duplicates by the purchase date. Close the index window and return to the datasheet view. Save the table. In order to view this better, let's drag the purchase date column next to the title column. Let's also double click the right edge of the title field name to widen the column width to accommodate the widest entry. We may also want to scroll the window. Select the title column and sort in ascending order with the sort ascending button in the toolbar. Notice the records are sorted and records with duplicate titles are sorted again by the purchase date. In this chapter, we learn to edit the records in a table. We also learn to find, replace, and filter our records. Finally, we learn to create indexes and sort our records. To delete the learning files from the hard drive, first close Access 97 by clicking the Close button in the upper right corner of the screen. Answer Yes to empty the clipboard and Yes to save our changes. When we're returned to the Windows 95 desktop, we'll right-click the Start button and open the Explorer. Highlight the Via Graphics Learning Folder. Then we'll hold down the Shift key as we drag the folder to the Recycle Bin. Release the mouse first, then the Shift key. Our files are deleted. We'll close Explorer and return to the Windows 95 desktop. We at Via Graphics would like to thank you for choosing our company for your computer training needs. Remember, if you plan to learn Microsoft Access or any other computer software, there's no better way than through video training with Via Graphics.